Mr. Rutledge an opportunity to address some concerns. We know that right now uh, you are in the midst of a case. That's why you're in Danville too. There's a court case tomorrow. But before we talk about that, for people who are just tuning in, even for some people that may not be familiar with your lawsuit and your case against the Chatham Police Department back in 2010, who is Merle Rutledge? Merle Rutledge is the person who's a civil rights uh, activist, not just locally, uh, nationally. I've handled issues in Ohio, North Carolina, even dealing with, of course, civil rights issues as well as First Amendment issues. I'm a big person about free speech, uh, free press, which, of course, that's what you do. Right, so, absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm very controversial. Um, a lot of people have said that I've been quiet throughout the time period, but I haven't. Um, I've worked on a lot of matters dealing with, of course, the police department, Danville Public Schools, um, Pennsylvania County Public Schools. So people can more. currently call you. It's amazing that you're here. Um, quite coincidentally, we've had a few calls um, before you even came on the air tonight, and you saw the call just now, which concerns Danville Public Schools. So people are able to call you if they have an issue with their child. Whether it, what, what umbrella does it fall under? What type of issues do you handle? I handle them all. Um, if it's a bullying okay. issue, uh, if I feel strongly about the issue and can there be some corrective action, I will, of course, go to bat for that person. Okay. Even meet with the school officials. But most of the time, Frank, they have to have a lawyer in the room, which is their policy, before meeting up with me. And I don't have no problem with that. Okay. All right. There may be a young lady that I may call in tonight. All right. So what, what is, as, where did you grow up? People might want to know, okay, who is he? Who's your family? Where did you grow up in? Actually, I'm from Irvington, New Jersey. Okay. All up right. until 10. And actually, after 10, I've been in the Pennsylvania County area, Chatham, Virginia, more specifically. I graduated from Dan River High School. So all big ups to the Wildcats. Of course, that state basketball championship. I'm real proud of y'all. Um, <laughs> okay. Yes, but um, yes, I always been from here. I never forgot my roots. All right, it's, so you and you're coming back to help. You haven't forgotten where you came from. Yeah. Let's from, let's deal with this case. The Commonwealth of Virginia, Christy Clay and Childress versus Merle Rutledge. It notes that uh, in 2013, Christy Clay was working at Woodside Village Apartments as a rental manager. She was arrested for using insulting language against an African-American couple. And this is from your Facebook page. Yep. The allegations are attached. And we have the allegations and hopefully we'll be able to show it of the allegedly telling that she'd wish to get rid of all African-Americans. There is a statement on the screen. The document says that Christy Clay and her husband, uh, they did try to add you even as a friend on Facebook, correct? Yes, that's correct. Oh, wow. And they said, and, and you're saying, listen, I'm not your friend. Let's talk about the case and this statement that's on the screen as we keep it right there. Someone has written on my daughter, and I don't want to read the name, uh, tried to get into a rental agreement at Woodside Village Apartments. And uh, Christy Clay came over and her husband, they told her to leave the premises. Is that correct? Yes. And you are you familiar with this? So can you give us yes, some background sir. on what we're reading right here? Because yes. it's so small, I can't see my writing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, this was a complaint that was filed before my incident. Um, this is when I found out that, uh, of course, race had a lot to do with her actions towards black people in a discriminatory manner. Okay. Um, she jumps on a truck and says, I'm going to get rid of all you black MFs. And is she still the property manager? You know what's shocking? Um the people I'm suing Tamar, uh -huh. um, which is her um, company, they're saying that she doesn't work for the company. She's a third-party independent contractor. And I'm like, well, she is able to ban people. She does the rentals to this place. So she works for you, you know. So I've never heard of a place try to dismiss somebody to try to go ahead and get out a liability that works for you regularly. Wow, so let's talk about this statement yeah. that we're seeing on the screen. Give us some background on that. Um, this was a couple who went, uh, had a disagreement with a family member. Uh, I guess it got loud in some kind of manner and Chrissy Clay went over to um, uh, get involved. Now, there's nothing wrong with getting involved and keeping the peace. But once you start saying, I'm trying to get rid of you black MFs and jumping on cars and all this and making people fearful for their life, 
you escalated a situation that could have been handled. How many people corroborated this story, though, um, and, and agreed that this is what she said? Because, uh, you know, we think about it. We're in an age now where you can record real yeah. quickly. Was this recorded? Um, how was it so that several people agreed that she said that she wanted to get rid of black people? Well, this is an actual document for the from the Danville Circuit Court. Okay. So this ain't me involved in any kind of way. Okay. This is what the police recorded from the victim, um, and of course the charge was filed. Which, when you write something, it is pretty much saying this is your statement, and you have to do it under oath. So, so yes. we know that that is so. So, yeah. how did you get involved? Because I want to make it clear, you don't live in Woodside. You did not live in Woodside. So how did Merle Rutledge get involved with this actual case of Woodside Village? Well, this one was pretty much one of the cases that was being complained about. How I got involved directly um, was because she attempted to ban me. But instead of just banning me, she called the police and said that this person is not supposed to be here, meaning I was trespassing on the property. Mm -hmm. Now, 12 of Danville Police Department's finest decided to come to this apartment complex to ban me. I'm not armed, I'm not a danger or a threat to the public. And one officer came there saying, I only came because you keep filing complaints against us. And I never heard of 12 police officers needed for one man. Maybe they fear what I know, or just maybe they just have What was their problems. reason for banning you? They had to give a reason why they had to ban you from Woodside Village. They said I was in the apartment because they had to go inside the apartment right. without tenants. I'm like, how in the world did I get an apartment and nobody let me in? Um, and the other one was for tenant complaints. Um, uh, Officer Hawkins, uh, I'm going to go on record with y'all names because y'all did this to me. That's why I'm back. Anyway, um, he comes in and asks her to sit, show him the complaints. Mm -hmm. She could not show him the complaints. We went to court on this matter. She still couldn't produce the complaints that supposedly came from tenants. Mm -hmm. So this was a direct act. And also, she basically said that uh, uh, Woodside has uh, video surveillance. She says, supposedly, we don't have no video surveillance. But the police department handles trespassing cases as well as murders based off of their video. So all of a sudden, they're not going after a video that is supposed to be helpful to them or it doesn't exist because it's helpful to me. Hmm. So this lets you know how far we'll things go. Us, baby. So... Tomorrow, this will be heard in court. How did this even, I mean, it's, who? I never trusted Danville Circuit Court judges to actually approve for me to move this lawsuit forward without no prepayment. What is the appeal. lawsuit for? And what does the lawsuit state? The lawsuit states that I was falsely arrested, detained, um, based off of Chris Clay, who worked for the apartment complex, and 12 Danville Police Department. So you're ac you actually have a lawsuit now against the Danville Police Department and Christy Clay. Yes, and her company. And the company. That employed her. And at this time period, it's about getting justice. And I'm not one to go ahead and sit down and be framed without fighting it all the way to... So you feel that you round. have been framed? I've been framed. Um, that whole case was as much, I wish I could say the words, crap, mm -hmm. ever to be put out there. I even put the trial transcript out and the suppression hearing so people could read the case for themselves. Right. They it's on Facebook for, um, and people have to actually friend you to get information. Now, do you ever worry? I mean, even that's one of the questions I asked Alvin, and we're going to be talking with him again because we do know that our city officials do watch the show. They they do. I'm pretty sure um, they're watching now. Right. And so do you ever get worried about that, that they're watching and they could possibly be noting some things that are said on the show to even use against you possibly in court? Um, they could go ahead and write it down. They could record it. They could go ahead and copy, give it to third parties. What I'm saying right now, I'm going to go on record for it. Now, if you got a problem with what I'm saying, you know how to find me. You know how to sue me. But it's shocking like I said, I know Danville is not going to give me justice. I had to go to Hanover Circuit Court all the way past Richmond. So, they why, approved the suit. so why have a lawsuit here in Danville if you already feel like you're not going to get justice? Because, for one, who am I to back away from a fight? I've been fighting for people all my life. You know, whether it's the school system, whether it's the court system, whether it's the police department. If I quit now, what does that say to the next person that's coming up?
So it's really to make a statement and really just to fight it to the end. It's more than to make a statement. It's payback. There's one thing about me all the way across the board. Anybody who knows me, you're not going to frame me. And my job is to go ahead and get my conviction overturned. But not only that, to make them pay. Have you advised your attorneys? I'm sure you have attorneys that are working with you. And we, if you mind taking some phone calls now, yeah, I, don't I think no people are ready to talk calls. with you. All right, eight three five four eight zero two. If you want to talk with Murr, we still have so much more to talk about, including uh, something that's dealing with the governor. You wrote a letter to the governor recently about a possible march yes. around the governor's office. So we'll talk about that. Hey, good evening, caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah, I was just wondering why do, why do people not realize they have to first of all obey the laws. And then, and then when they're not obeying the laws, and when the, the police officers are called on them, they don't have to uh, adhere to what the police officers say. Okay. Uh, they think they can pull guns on them, or fight them, or run from them, or you know, nobody. That's nobody's right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for our protection. That's for the whole world's protection. Is the police department? Well, okay. I'm going to answer your question. Uh, one. Earlier in the show, I said there's no excuse for anybody pulling a gun on the officer or hitting the officer, resisting arrest, or disobeying the law. Our job is to make you conscious of the law and what your rights is. Now, I would never condone violence at all. Even with the Dallas police shootings, um, Baton Rouge police shootings, even one down here where Pennsylvania County Sheriff's Deputy had his car shot up, I would never, ever agree with somebody taking any kind of violent acts so no matter it. how bad they are. You don't condone it. No, no. I'd rather deal with them in court. You know, I, I just heard something on, on TV uh, about two, a couple of weeks ago where somebody was actually surprised that white people are afraid of black people. And I wonder why. I wonder why black people are surprised that white people are afraid of them. Well, I think you made an overgeneralization of a statement to put black people or white people as we all think alike. I got plenty of white friends. We eat out. We play go bowling. Um, if you're in fear of anybody, that's a question you have to ask yourself as an individual. Are you I, afraid of, of African Americans, Carla? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Uh, well, I'm cautious. Uh, let, let's put it that way. I'm very cautious because... Uh, I just I just read a, an article about um some in the paper here where they said um uh, where it said that um well um let me find it let me see I think it's in today's paper. Hey caller, have you ever had somebody from the other race um over your house for dinner? Oh yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. you wasn't scared Absolutely. of that person. I used to be in a marching band here in Danville. Okay. And I, and I you Good. know I had a lot of black friends. Okay, so yeah, I, sure, I certainly did. So, what Go causes ahead. your alarm mm -hmm. uh, to the caller? What causes your they your heightened? Get... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go very south. What I what I was talking about was this. There was an article about. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, it was talking about um this thing. I think it was talking about this thing in um where was it? Up in north, up north. Corey, um, you're talking about the young lady, is it Corey Gaines, that was killed? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, you know why, why, why do black folks think they're going to tear up the whole town or their side of town? Or what are they accomplishing? And then, and then their uh, aldermen, I guess that's pretty much like what we call city council, would come in and say, we're tired of being oppressed. Well, look. Yeah, you know, if I'm a police officer and somebody's pointing a gun at me, I don't have time to think about oppression. I really don't. I got, all I got to do is think about getting home to my wife and children. You know? Okay, Murrow, did you want to comment? Um, actually, on a lot of situations with, uh, I guess you're trying to go into protests and whether I agree Black with people matter. being violent and okay. stuff like that. Honestly, I told people I don't agree with people being on a highway because I'm looking at the safety of people. Somebody can actually have a mental breakdown and run people over. Then we lose people. And I don't Everybody care what race you are. Lives matter. 
Yeah. Uh, and it's amazing you just brought it up because we want, we're going to talk about Black Lives oh, Matter. Matter. You don't agree with the protesting and the Black Lives Matter movement. Excuse me? You don't agree with the protesting and the Black Lives Matter movement? It depends on how you protest. Okay. Are you, are you gonna That's fair. Tear up the town or, or hurt people or right. intimidate people or, you know, right. way of doing things, way of doing everything. But, but everybody's lives matter. Black lives is not the only lives that matter. Right. White right. lives matter and blue lives matter. Right. And I actually now, agree, who do you agree call, with you. Who do you call when, you, when somebody's intimidating you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna call the police. Yeah. I I will call the police. <laughs> and Cola, I think uh, Cola, let me answer you. Honestly, I agree with you. I like exactly what you just said. I don't think people should be intimidating nobody at all. There's certain things about Black Lives Matter I do agree with. There are very sensible people about getting the Someone job compared done. it to the KKK, well, saying that it was a hate group. Well, the KKK already determined themselves as a hate group. Um, I believe that any organization is going to have members that I don't agree with, no matter what organization that you're a part of. And yes, as when much, hmm? as much as people say they want to be similar, why do we have to be so dissimilar? You know, well, that's the thing, Cola. Like at first you said, why black people and white people or the intimidation factor? I think we all need to work together on bridging this gap. See, when people don't know too much about people, they tend to go Let ahead and go one with one what they one read one right. up here. All right, go ahead. We don't want to talk in, at the same time. Who, go ahead, Carl. Who is going to step up and say, hey, that's enough of all this nonsense. Who's going to say, it's enough of this intimidation, you know, on both sides, and, and everybody just calm the hell down, and, and let's, let's try to get along here. Actually I, actually, I would like to talk to you a lot further. I got black friends and white friends. I'm white. I got black friends and white friends. Mm -hmm. But you said you were scared. I always have all my whole life. So what makes it's, you scared of African Americans? Because you also mentioned that you do have a high. The ones I don't know, you know, we, I, I live in a, I live almost in a neighborhood where I grew up in. Which was where? It was a, it was a predominantly white neighborhood, North Danville. Okay. It was, at the time when I grew up in it was predominantly white. Now it's probably, I'd say, fifty percent black. And 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 I was um, intimidated by about five or six, about twelve year old kids one day. They were challenging me, and I'm fifty eight years old. Mm. You know yes. what? Where are their parents at? What, who taught them that? Well, get issue. Who taught them that? When I was a kid, I was afraid of older people. I mean, I, I respected them, and I was afraid of their authority. Well, times has changed, but factually... Um, I see where you're coming at, but actually it's not a black and white issue. I want you to sort of break apart from that part. Um, we have a problem with parenting and kids respecting their elders. Whether you white, black, if you are elder and you're trying to lead the kids in the right direction, then of course they should respect you. Right about you. that. And about I don't, that. I really don't control well, anybody. Out of schools. Hmm? I really don't condone anybody talking back to their elders in that type of way. But my thing is, are, have you ever been a victim yourself of these kids? Meaning, have they personally attacked you or did they just say something that you didn't like? Yeah, they, they, they were going to. They were coming at me, you know, and I had to I grabbed my phone and act like I was going to call somebody because I, I didn't know what else to do. What was I going to do? I didn't want to pull a gun on them, you know. Why, well, would you like to... Um... We're going to have to take a break, but Merle wants to talk to you further. Um, I don't know how you guys are going to do that, but would you like to talk with Merle further after the show? Well, I, I, I just I was just flipping through the channels, and I saw this question and answer thing, and it reminded me of this elderman, alderman, or whatever, talking about black people are tired of being oppressed, but the white people are tired of being oppressed too right now. Mm. They really are. Well, you really have a well, you have a no, black man. Y'all not hearing that. I'm well, listening. Hearing I, that. I, I'm listening. 
How are white people oppressed? Uh, could you answer that for me? How do how do Caucasians feel that they are oppressed? I'm trying to understand. Okay. Because, you know, black folks, are, the way I've been hearing it for years is black folks are the, are the minorities. But, you know, right now, white folks are minorities. White man is a minority. But how are you all oppressed? That's the, the When you talk about oppression, that's a word that, that I would like for you to elaborate on. How do you all feel like you are are being oppressed. I'm not being oppressed. I'm being I'm being held hostage. That's what I want to say. Um, don't threaten me with this and that. No, we might burn this town down if we're not satisfied with this and that. You know, you know that is what in the world. Where did where did all this thugism come from? I hear you. Listen, well, I appreciate you for calling in. Go ahead, Merle, because well, we've got to take a break. Uh, well, she gave you an opportunity to get to know me. I'm black, and, of course, you don't want to take up the opportunity because, obviously, you became silent towards that part. Maybe on the other end, try to get to know as many people as you can right? before coming to judge. He said he doesn't mind meeting you. Oh, I don't have a problem with meeting you. I would look forward to it, sitting down at the table, hearing your views and your insight. And let's make that happen very soon. I do look forward to it. I just want you to know that I'm one person. I don't plan on intimidating you, but I want you to have an overall picture that not everybody is just the same. We all want we peace need, just like you. I think we need white leaders and black leaders to get their minds together, to let's get everybody together. And let's don't let I agree. Side go crazy, and, you know, and, and hold the other hostage I hear you. And then listen, we appreciate you for calling in tonight. Thank you. I hope that you'll continue to, to stay right there. Don't change the channel. 835-4802 if you want to call Merle. He mentioned two important things before we take our break. He did bring up Black Lives Matter, which is one of those issues you wanted to address. He also brought up protesting. Um, with the recent events, uh, you mentioned that you wanted to do something uh, on a, a larger scale, which was to go to the governor's mansion yeah. and um, hold a march or a small protest. Good evening, caller. Could you hold on? Because we do need to take a break. Yeah. All right. And well, I want to know what, what's going on with that when we come back. All okay, right. No Tell problem. us. Give us an update. Merle Rutledge is my guest tonight. The phone lines are open. We're going to go over time because I feel like he's going to be getting some calls. I'm getting a lot of messages, by the way, Merle. Uh, I'll try to read some of those during the break. Stay with us. You're watching Star Talk on Star News. We'll take your call. A Caucasian gentleman. He says that white people feel that they are oppressed and that they are being held hostage. <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, um, I don't know what kind of oppression he's talking about. But like I said, I look forward to talking to him so we could get a little bit more detailed on what he considers oppression. But people want to know why did you laugh? Uh, because it was laugh. It was funny. Very funny. Um, oppression is a very strong word and it's very hard for anybody to really hear, especially black people, that um, you feel oppressed and we're the ones getting shot at on the street. There you are know? some white people that get shot, they would say. Yeah, but they're getting away with it. You know, I'm talking about police officers, George Zimmerman, and bragging about it. There's one thing to walk away from murder and just be bragging about it, and then selling the gun on an auction for $200,000 to just say, I killed Trayvon Martin. Well, let's let's go to the phone lines, and then we're going to get an update on what's going hey, on. Man. Hey, Mr. Soundoff, I think this is. Mr. Soundoff? Hey, how you doing? I'm well. Mr. Soundoff, meet Merle Rutledge. What do you think, and what's your question or comment hey, tonight? Hey, Mr. Rutledge. Hey, how you doing? It's a pleasure to meet you. Was that the raid on the house? North Main Street. North Main Street. This man was old, decrepit, walked with a cane, and he was an old old man and never bothered anybody, and he was shot 16 times by the damn police. His hands were shot from all of him. And that was in the early, it was in 2000. Um, go ahead while you're talking, I'll pull it up, but go ahead, Mr. Soundoff. I was wondering what you thought about that, and another thing I like to say, the guy that just called in about a press and all that. Do you feel oppressed? You I, are Caucasian. I, I said it before on TV, you know, it's not a black and white thing. It's a, it's a rich and poor thing, as far as I'm concerned. You know, poor white people.
people poor black people we take the brunt of the police and everything else well their their whole funding comes from low income people mostly predominantly african american but do not think i uh, am over generalizing uh poor whites the fact is y'all pay their salaries more than any rich person does and realistically um i don't know too much about this situation with the 16 gunshots and stuff like that but it appears to hit you very hard um someone is also saying tell him that merle zimmerman is not a white man well you look at him and you go ahead and put your whole picture on it right now who's all hanging out with him go and ahead mr sound him? off go ahead mr sound off well, I'm very familiar that people have been uh, murdered, um, killed, and of course the Commonwealth attorneys have decided not to press charges because they considered it a justified shooting. Honestly, I believe the Virginia State Police should have handled that investigation to make it a lot more neutral. But of course, unless the city itself go ahead and makes that call, of course, um, is whatever the Commonwealth attorney decides to say on it. But doesn't mean it's right. Yeah. Oh, murder is still murder. There's no statute of limitations for that. And that was back in 2006. Yeah, yeah 2006. I'm going to pull up the case form so that he'll be able to read it. Um, Mr. Soundoff, what do you think about this case that Merle has to face tomorrow with the Danville Police Department in Woodside Village? Well, well I'm right here. I don't think it can be warned. Uh, and if you, if you got a lawyer, make sure you got one from out of town because all of them here are in the clique. Is your attorney from out of town? No, I'm actually handling this Oh, you're myself. representing yourself? Yeah, yeah. actually, oh, yeah. I found this real interesting because the last case, um, um, pretty much the deck was stacked and beyond stacked. Like I said, you make your call when you read the trial transcripts or the motion to suppress hearing, and you can make your own call on it. All right. All right, Mrs. At least you ain't scared to do it. At least you standing up because most people in Danville, they just let things go by. And then when something happens, they just act like it's a surprise. You know but what I'm saying? I can tell you one thing about me. I don't care if you're white, black, if you've been done wrong, I want you to contact me and vice versa. I do not do it just because black people or um, a certain race is a focal point. I'm a focal point on equal justice, equal protection of the law. And as far as I'm concerned, I look forward to hearing more from you because the more that we come together, the more we can have a dialogue with the police department, the judges, and more. But it has to be equal, uh, equilateral, meaning we all have to be on the same page and want the same thing. And right. that's justice. All right, Mr. Soundoff, thank you so much. Okay. All right, 835-4802, there are some people that are mess messaging me that are trying to get through um, the line. Someone actually messaged me that's familiar with your case, um, Merle. Okay. And they said that everything was caught on the video, on the video phone. Is um, that correct? We have been there. Um, I believe that's Christy Clay on the line, so hi, Christy Clay. Um, okay. You okay. said... Well, we have a call. Good evening, caller. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey, Jessica. Hey, Merle. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Uh, Merle, I will say to you, you stand up and fight for yourself. It's America's way. And oh. much courage to you. I think that when you do this, uh, it looks like you're a, a, sore, a sore thumb and you stick out because you don't see much of uh, black advocacy or activism from a black man in this area. But you uh, have the right uh, as an American citizen to stand up and protest and peacefully assemble for what you believe. And I know that it, this makes a lot of folks uncomfortable in this city, race dogs. So it makes black people uncomfortable and white people uncomfortable. But, Merle, you have rights, and you stand up for them. We lose the draw. You stand. That's what I was taught. We lose the draw. Stand. And uh, you continue to fight and with the courage of your conviction. And when you go before God, he'll be your judge. And it, it, it's one thing to lose the fight here, but when you go before God, you win the war. So I want to say that. That no matter what your critics say, because you got plenty of them, you got you got them both black and white. Don't think that it's just one race, because race is an uncomfortable conversation, and it's an inconvenient conversation, in particular in the South. Now I want to get on to the gentleman that uh, said that uh, he's afraid of black folks. Well, let's give him credit; he was telling the truth. Um, he was owning up to something that 
we know is not just a perception, it is a reality. And I will tell you this, Jessica, the fact that you have these great shows make a lot of people uncomfortable, uh, and particularly in the South, in the last Confederacy. And this is why people still think it's important to wave a flag and that they have free speech rights because Show the picture, they, baby. They, they, they rebel against progress and the future. And people say, well, what is she saying? I'm saying that, that uh, some people, and Merle, I'm going more closer to what you wouldn't touch. After the Civil War in 1865 and the, the Negro left the plantation without anything, there was a policing of the black man. The police department came into uh, being as we know it today. Uh, the black man left the plantation with no shoes, and he was policed. We know this because the Ku Klux Klan started in, uh, in Polk County, Tennessee, right after the Civil War. We also know this because the Supreme Court, that black man was considered two-thirds of a man. So I'm saying to the white caller who does not understand why we are where we are, we got a history. Black folks and white folks got a history, and we might as well just own it. And I think when you have integrity and honesty and you bring it to the table and you lay it out there, you're better off. You've got a better opportunity to resolve it. It's when you try to keep hiding things or you act like they don't exist or you're in denial. Now, I'm not saying that the gentleman that called <clears throat> is a racist. What I am saying is he has not walked a mile or 10 miles or 100 miles or 1,000 miles or a million miles in the black man's shoes. And so when a person like Merle gets up and speaks, everybody becomes upset and inconvenienced. But he said that white people are oppressed. Well, he, he decided his opinion. Now, his view of it, I, I'm going to address it. In the last 20, 30, 40 years since the 70s, we had affirmative action, and black people could, quote, unquote, move into the mainstream of American society. There has been a white backlash of white people feel like they are being threatened and their culture is being threatened. In their eyes, they are correct. But white people have to remember that black <clears throat> people have never been given justice or reconciliation anyway. And we can look at the criminal justice system. We can look at the policing. We can look at the neighborhoods. We can look at the blight. We can look at the food stamps, the poverty. There are tremendous problems in the African-American community. And as you heard me say before, if these problems are not reconciled and justice and, and is not brought to the table and the black man is not given a fair shake, this is not race talk. The house that America stands in is going to divide and it's going to divide along racial lines because when you keep putting off the inevitable, eventually the lid's going to blow off. I'm praying that white people and black people everywhere will do the inconvenient work and look inside themselves and say we need to move forward and make progress and work this thing out because I do not see with the school system being predominantly minority and the school system failing and African American men being incarcerated at record rates for less minor infractions and black women, young black women, 70% uh, of them having children out of wedlock. That's not just a black problem. Mm -hmm. That's an American problem. And if I can leave white people with anything in America, you might be doing all right and you might be comfortable, but it's not a black problem. It's an American problem. I hear you. And I appreciate you as always for calling in. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for Merle, the, uh, yeah. we're going to have to go over time, but I, we, do, we are showing the flag because a few people have mentioned the flag tonight. And, and that's something you actually wanted to talk about tonight. Um, as well. Let's uh, go to the phone lines. Caller, could you hold on? We'll take your phone call after the break if you can hold on for me. Okay. All right, hold on, please. Uh, get your thoughts real quick. Well, it's freedom of speech. Um, I know I do not agree with what the flag represents or its uh, heritage and basically the uh, what we had to deal with because of that flag, but I would be a hypocrite as being a First Amendment advocate to say they don't have a right to fly their flag. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I'm on their side for that one. But there's a flip side to it. If we take away their flag, that means government could take away our flag. We have black power. We have our expression. We have Black Lives Matter. We have ways to show our opposition. <clears throat> and last time I checked, they lost the war. 
All right, on that note, we've got to take a break. Caller, please hold on. If you would like to call in, we'll go over a little bit. 835-4802, that is the number, and I need to correct you on one thing. That wasn't Christy Clay that sent the message. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. So we don't want to falsely accuse her or put that out there. It, it wasn't Christy. Um, but in the meantime, if you want to talk to Merle, give us a call, 835-4802. We'll take a quick break. And a Caucasian gentleman, he says that white people feel that they are oppressed and that they are being held hostage. <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, uh, I don't know what kind of oppression he's talking about. But like I said, I look forward to talking to him so we could get a little bit more detailed on what he considers oppression. But people want to know why did you laugh? Uh, because it was laugh, it was funny, very funny. Um, oppression is a very strong word, and it's very hard for anybody to really hear, especially black people that um, you feel oppressed and we the ones getting shot at on the street. There you are know? some white people that get shot, they would say. Yeah, but they getting away with it. You know, I'm talking about police officers, George Zimmerman, and bragging about it. Just one thing to walk away from murder and just be bragging about it and then selling the gun on an auction for $200,000 to just say, I killed Trayvon Martin. Well, let's let's go to the phone lines and then we're going to get an update on what's going okay. on. Hey, Mr. Soundoff, I think this is. Mr. Soundoff? Yeah, how you doing? I'm well. Mr. Soundoff, meet Merle Rutledge. What do you think and what's your question or comment tonight? How you doing, Mr. Rutledge? Hey, how you doing? It's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, I'd like to ask Mr. Rutledge if he's familiar with the killing of Remy Hunt a few years ago by the Danville police. I call it a murder. A lot of people call it a killing. But the way it was done, it was a murder. Was that the raid on the house North by SWAT Street. team? North Main Street. Main Hill. This man was old, decrepit, walked with a cane, and he was an old, old man and never bothered anybody, and he was shot 16 times by the damn police. His hands were shot from off of him. And that was in the early, it was in 2000. Um, go ahead while you're talking, I'll pull it up, but go ahead, Mr. Soundoff. I was wondering what you thought about that, and another thing I like to say, the guy that just called in about oppression, do you feel oppressed? You I, are a Caucasian. I, I said it before on TV, you know, it's not a black and white thing. It's a, it's a rich and poor thing, as far as I'm concerned. You know, poor white people, poor black people, we take the brunt of the police and everything else. Well, their, their whole funding comes from low-income people, mostly predominantly African-American, but do not think I uh, am overgeneralizing uh, poor whites. The fact is, y'all pay their salaries more than any rich person does. And realistically, um, I don't know too much about this situation with the 16 gunshots and stuff like that, but it appears to hit you very hard. Um, someone is also saying, tell him that Merle Zimmerman is not a white man. Well, you look at him. And you go ahead and put your whole picture on it. Right now, who's all hanging out with him? Go and ahead, Mr. Soundoff. Him? Go ahead, Mr. Soundoff. Well, I, that's all I had to say. I was just wondering if he was familiar with the Remy Hunt thing, you know. I'm very familiar that people have been uh, murdered, um, killed, and, of course, the Commonwealth attorneys have decided not to press charges because they consider it a justified shooting. Honestly, I believe the Virginia State Police should have handled their investigation to make it a lot more neutral, but of course, unless the city itself go ahead and makes that call, of course, um, is whatever the Commonwealth attorney decides to say on it, but doesn't mean it's right. Yeah. Well, murder is still wrong. murder. There's no statute of limitations for that. He's a 10 year old in this city could have whooped that man and, and the police shot him 16 times. And that was back in 2006. It does. Yeah, 2006. I'm going to pull up the case form so that he'll be able to read it, um, Mr. Soundoff. What do you think about this case that Merle has to face tomorrow with the Danville Police Department in Woodside Village? Well, well I'm like him. I don't think it can be one. Uh, and if you, if you got a lawyer, make sure you got one from out of town because all of them here are in the clique. Is your attorney from out of town? No, I'm actually handling this oh, one Oh, you're myself. representing yourself? Yeah, yeah actually, I yourself. found this real interesting because the last case... um. Um, pretty much the deck was stacked and beyond stacked. Like I said, you make your call when you read the trial transcripts or the motion to suppress hearing, and you can make your own call on it. All right. All right, Mrs. At least you ain't scared to do it. At least you're standing up because most people in Danville, they just 
let things go by, and then when something happens, they just act like it's a surprise. You know but what I'm saying? I can tell you one thing about me. I don't care if you're white, black, if you've been done wrong, I want you to contact me and vice versa. I do not do it just because black people or um, a certain race is a focal point. I'm a focal point on equal justice, equal protection of the law. And as far as I'm concerned, I look forward to hearing more from you because the more that we come together, the more we can have a dialogue with the police department, the judges and more. But it has to be equal, uh, equilateral, meaning we all have to be on the same page and want the same thing. And right. that's justice. All right, Mr. Soundoff, thank you so much. Hey, All right, 835-4802, there are some people that are mess messaging me that are trying to get through um, the line. Someone actually messaged me that's familiar with your case, um, Merle. Okay. And they said that everything was caught on the video, on the video phone. Is um, that correct? We have been there. Um, I believe that's Christy Clay on the line, so hi, Christy Clay. Um, okay. You All said... Right. Well, we have a call. Good evening, caller. Welcome to the show. I'm doing well. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Uh, Merle, I will say to you, you stand up and fight for yourself. It's America's way. And oh. much courage to you. I think that when you do this, uh, it looks like you're a, a, sore, a sore thumb and you stick out because you don't see much of uh, black advocacy or activism from a black man in this area. But you uh, have the right uh, as an American citizen to stand up and protest and peacefully assemble for what you believe. And I know that it, this makes a lot of folks uncomfortable in this city, race dogs. So it makes black people uncomfortable and white people uncomfortable. But, Merle, you have rights, and you stand up for them. We lose the draw. You stand. That's what I was taught. We lose the draw. Stand. And uh, you continue to fight and with the courage of your conviction. And when you go before God, he'll be your judge. And it, it, it's one thing to lose the fight here, but when you go before God, you win the war. So I want to say that. That no matter what your critics say, because you got plenty of them, you got you got them both black and white. Don't think that it's just one race, because race is an uncomfortable conversation, and it's an inconvenient conversation, in particular in the South. Now, I want to get on to the gentleman that uh, said that uh, he's afraid of black folks. Well, let's give him credit. He was telling the truth. Um, he was owning up to something that we know is not just a perception. It is a reality. And I will tell you this, Jessica. The fact that you have these ratios make a lot of people uncomfortable, uh, and particularly in the South, in the last Confederacy. And this is why people still think it's important to wave a flag and that they have free speech rights because show the picture, they, baby. They, they, they rebel against progress and the future. And people say, well, what is she saying? I'm saying that, that uh, some people, and Merle, I'm going more closer to what you wouldn't touch. After the Civil War in 1865, and the, the Negro left the plantation without anything, there was a policing of the black man. The police department came into uh, being as we know it today. Uh, the black man left the plantation with no shoes, and he was policed. We know this because the Ku Klux Klan started in, uh, in Polk County, Tennessee, right after the Civil War. We also know this because the Supreme Court, that black man was considered two-thirds of a man. So I'm saying to the white caller who does not understand why we are where we are, we got a history. Black folks and white folks got a history, and we might as well just own it. And I think when you have integrity and honesty and you bring it to the table and you lay it out there, you're better off. you got a better opportunity to resolve it. It's when you try to keep hiding things or you act like they don't exist or you're in denial. Now, I'm not saying that the gentleman that called <clears throat> is a racist. What I am saying is he has not walked a mile or 10 miles or 100 miles or 1,000 miles or a million miles in the black man's shoes. And so when a person like Merle gets up and speaks, everybody becomes upset and inconvenient. But he said that white people are oppressed. Well, he, he decided his opinion. Now, his view of I, I'm going to address it. In the last... 20, 30, 40 years since the 70s, we had affirmative action, and black people could, quote, unquote, move into the mainstream of American society. There has been a white backlash of white people feel like they are being threatened and their culture is being threatened. In their eyes, they are correct. But white people have to remember that black people have never been given justice or reconciliation anyway, and we can look at the 
this thing out because I do not see with the school system being predominantly minority and the school system failing and African-American men being incarcerated at record rates for less minor infractions and black women, young black women, uh, 70% of them having children out of wedlock, that's not just a black problem. Mm -hmm. That's an American problem. And if I can leave white people with anything in America, you might be doing all right and you might be comfortable, but it's not a black problem. It's an American problem. I hear you and appreciate you as always for calling in. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Merle, uh, yeah. we're going to have to go over time, but I, we, do, we are showing the flag because a few people have mentioned the flag tonight. And, and that's something you actually wanted to talk about tonight um, as well. Let's uh, go to the phone lines. Caller, could you hold on? We'll take your phone call after the break if you can hold on for me. Okay. All right, hold on, please. Uh, get your thoughts real quick. Well, it's freedom of speech. Um, I know I do not agree with what the flag represents or its uh, heritage and basically the, um, what we had to deal with because of that flag. But I would be a hypocrite as being a First Amendment advocate to say they don't have a right to fly their flag. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I'm on their side for that one. But there's a flip side to it. If we take away their flag, that means government could take away our flag. We have black power. We have our expression. We have Black Lives Matter. We have ways to show our opposition. <clears throat> and last time I checked, they lost the war. All right. On that note, we've got to take a break. Caller, please hold on. If you would like to call in, we'll go over a little bit. 835-4802, that is the number. And I need to correct you on one thing. That wasn't Christy Clay that sent the message. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. So we don't want to falsely accuse her or put that out there. It, it wasn't Christy. Um, but in the meantime, if you want to talk to Merle, give us a call. 835-4802. We'll take a quick break. And comment tonight for our guest. Yes. Uh, I, I like the way that young man is telling me. Uh, what he's saying is the right. Uh, you know, we want justice. But we don't want uh, to do other people in to get justice. We, we want justice. Justice can be given if people just commit to right. And uh, it's not the duty of the black people to end racism. We didn't start. It's the duty of white, duty of white folks to end racism. They started it. We, we, we've been sending all the branches back to them ever since we've been in over here. Well, well, what did you think about the gentleman? And he is entitled to his opinion that has gave us another, he's given us another perspective, possibly that white people feel that they are oppressed. And he even said that they feel that they're being held hostage. So is it maybe we're not looking at the other side of this? I'm, I mean, I'm just asking. That's not really, what he's talking is not really reality. What he's talking for us to believe that uh, black folks is oppressed and white folks. have a perspective on that Merle yeah well the thing is I understand where you come from I truly do and I just think right now um, honestly we all got work to end racism and it doesn't mean us being distanced towards anybody it means we all got to be basically willing to get to know each other and that's the problem is the lack of knowledge of other people 
And I think that is pretty much the dividing line. Everybody's going off of these stereotypes. And it makes me sick, to be honest. I don't want to judge anybody but for their character as a person, no matter what their race. I'm going to have that same person at my dinner table and talking to them and having a discussion with them. But I'm also want to embrace them as a friend. So we all need to work on that. Whether you black or white or not, you need to work on more so right now. Getting the other side to change their opinion about everybody and everybody on that other side needs to do the same thing. Because we could do so much to work along dropping the crime rate and having peace if we all just decide, hey, it's time for us to actually talk, have a straight up conversation, don't sugarcoat it, but also at the end of that talk or the end of that meeting, have a handshake and know I got another friend to talk to. All right, Carla, I appreciate you know what? Go ahead. You know what? Uh, uh, that, what you're saying, uh, when you come straight down the line, I agree with you. But the thing about it, we're willing to do that. But the other side is not willing to do it. Uh, 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 I would love to say for us to just sit down at the table and bring truth. Both sides. I don't want I don't want to run over nobody, but I want us to get justice. And, and that's what we're waiting for. Uh, we've been waiting for that for, for, for 400 years, really. Uh, just like when they started that uh, United Dan bill. I mean, that's what we thought was going to happen, but it didn't happen. Yeah, Danville United disbanded, of course, and we that's what inevitably happened with Danville United. I do have to go because we're almost running out of time. We want you to talk about the governor's mansion. You sent a letter to the governor yes. and reached out to him because you were concerned after the, the aftermath of so many things that were occurring yeah. in our communities and even nationally. So give us an update on that. Well, is it going to happen? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, they're working on a date now, trying to get the security arrangements done. Um, we're just waiting on a response of available dates. Um, I told them this is not going to be a protest or any kind of violence towards police or back and forth. This is just our way of talking to y'all, and hopefully y'all get a chance to go ahead and respond. Have and you gotten response from people? Well, go ahead. What is it specifically for? Um, this is for the South Side, Danville, Martinsville, okay. surrounding areas. And this is about, of course, what police departments have been doing down here, bankrolling their budgets by setting up people of all races. The low income, like you said, but factually, we have a lot of issues and the governor's not paying attention. And I guess we thought since he was Democrat that we was gonna have some changes. Sometimes the only change that can be done, not on the streets, but in his face, he's gonna have to respond with people in front of his office. Now, they responded to you. What did they say in the correspondence letter? They said that they are going to work on getting the dates for March. Um, we're going to be back and forth having conversations as far as getting everything set up, security parameters and stuff like right. that. And I'm going to continue to work with them, but hopefully by actually the end of this week. Okay. Oh, okay. In the end of this week, we should have a date available. And whoever wants to jump on board, this ain't about fighting nobody. This ain't about being against white people or whatever. This is about our issues and even for jobs coming here. And what Danville needs to understand, until we start creating more diversity and taking this message that I'm taking to Richmond, mm -hmm. we are not going to have jobs come here. Right. And we're not going to have a drop in crime because jobs are scared to send their black workers or their Latinos, or low income, or people who just want to have a decent place to live and work. Economically, we need we need yeah. jobs. That's one of our main issues. That's one of the main issues that we're facing right now in Danville. Have people reached out to you, especially since you posted that information? Are they saying, hey, Mer, we want to jump in, we want to get involved? I know I'm one of those who, who wants to help out in any way that I can. I'm concerned mm -hmm. about our, our community. But are, do you have a, a host of people who are backing you? There's a host of people that's backing me. One thing okay. to back me, but I need to actually see people actually going through the steps with me okay. and seriously on board. So what is it that you need? What do you need people to do tonight that, that are watching who are concerned just like yourself? Yes, the governor has a website. It's called Contact the Governor. You can put that in the Google. I know it's too long to put up here. <laughs> and write the governor saying you support this march. And, of course, you're going to do everything you can to keep it peaceful. We want the message to be about business and also about changing policy. But we have to do it the right way. Okay. So, like I said, 
It's nothing going to be about we don't have permits and stuff like that. It's going to be done the right way. And realistically, I'm trying to go ahead and help Danville and the South Side as well as Virginia Beach and where I stand now. Right, right. So how do people get in touch with you uh, who have been watching tonight? They need an advocate for a rights, a civil rights issue, school system, uh, job, inequality, equity, anything, uh, equitable rights. What? How do they get in touch with you? You can email me, Merle T. Rutledge at gmail.com. Okay, let's put that up if we can, uh, Fabian. Merle T. Rutledge, his name. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. You right. can find me on Facebook. Any one of my blogs, you can respond back to any blog. It's going to come right back to me to approve the message, to let me know you want me to call. I will call, which is shocking. Some people don't. I do. And, yes, I don't care who you are. I'm willing to talk to you whether you hate my guts. I want to talk to you. I love the you. way your wife is helping our producer around. I yeah. love that. I like her. <laughs> well, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. But... <laughs> I want to keep having these conversations and Absolutely. building this bridge. We're going to have a conversation tomorrow night because I need to talk with you after your court case tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, I look forward to yeah, it. Yeah, well, let's do that. Let's do an update because people who are watching, we want to know. I know I want to know what yeah. happens tomorrow yeah. when you when you go to court. Yeah, I expect the deck to be... You know, is this going to be the end? Is this the? Is this just one of a of the of one of the few uh, just, trials that you have to go through? Or is this it tomorrow? No, it's one of the hearings. Okay, it's that's just going a hearing. Up to trial. Okay, and, when is the actual trial date scheduled? They haven't set the date. I mean, this case is almost going on a year yet now. So this has been going on a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so before. so tomorrow is a preliminary hearing. Yes. Okay. Yes. So can we get an update on what happened? Oh, yes. You will definitely get an update. Okay. Um, I will keep everybody informed as soon as it happens. And I look forward to my day in court. It's all about justice. None more, none less. Uh, that's a good way to end. So listen, on that note, uh, your email address is on the screen. Give it to us one more time. As you're saying it, people are actually watching it and they're hearing you too. So it just helps out. Okay. It's Merle. T, middle initial T S and Tony, or T S and Travis Rutledge at gmail.com. Um, and just feel free to respond to me at any time. I look forward to it. I know y'all haven't seen me in a while. I'm back. So I'm looking forward to getting some work. Now, out. I know that your pra your privacy settings are set up. Um, Risa has it set up a certain way on Facebook. Can people reach out to you on Facebook? Are you accepting friend friend request on Facebook as well on social media? Yes. Anybody okay. can reach out to me. Anybody. Okay. All right. So you can also, for our social media folks, you can reach out to Merle on Facebook as well. So we've got a lot of ground to cover. It's not over yet. We're actually just getting started. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate you just for just coming in tonight and talking to Star News. I think this has been a great show. You can always tell when people are paying attention, but because the messages are still coming in tonight, um, someone wants to tell wanted me to tell you Merle just continue to stand up for yourself um, I'm getting some other messages and if I start reading these messages it's going to lead into a whole <laughs> another hour of conversation but thank you I look forward to it yeah I look forward to it and I hope everybody reach out police officers please reach out to me I want to work with you too prosecutors you want to work with the police but you told them that this is your child this is payback how do you think that no makes this sense? is <laughs> this is about bad cops okay but I, I want to work with them okay and because I want everybody to get along but yes if you done me wrong we're gonna have to get truth that's the point you want truth and that's, that's justice truth. justice yes. is truth yeah so um, on that note Merle Rutledge has been my guest tonight we this is not the last that we will see or hear from him uh, we are going to get some updates on his case as this this case continues it's, it's kind of interesting and I'm still not clear on everything. So that's why we want you to come back in and, and talk with us. All right. Okay. Hey, reach out to me as well by Facebook. Also by um, Twitter. I'm on IG as well. Instagram. You can find me there. And uh, stargirl3457 at yahoo.com. I want to hear from you. Danville guy, I'm sure that I'm going to hear from you on this particular show. I want to get your comments. If you want to reach out to me by email as well. Hey, give me a call. Contact me message on Facebook too. I do receive your messages. If we're not friends, I don't always get the messages. So you have to send me a friend request or follow me on Facebook, Jessica Griffith on Facebook. Have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow night with more.